If you watched my review of the Eosheen Falcon 210, you know that my biggest complaint about this copter was that the ESCs were very, very bad. You can watch the video review uh, if you want to know more about that, but they were bad, bad. And some people said, well, actually, those ESCs aren't terrible if you just put BL Heli on them. They come with a special firmware from Flycolor, and uh, BL Heli does a much better job, performs much better. Now, they're still not stellar ESCs. I checked with Quad McFly, and he said he doesn't think they have a dedicated gate driver on them, for example. So the braking performance is not going to be great. But surely, BL Heli's got to make them better, right? And in fact, that's what people say. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to flash BL Heli onto the ESCs on your Eosheen Falcon 210. Let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the heat shrink from the ESCs, and that's what you're going to see me doing here. The reason you need to do that is that the programming pads to you need to get at are on the board and they're underneath the heat shrink, so you got to get that off. While you're removing the ESCs, be careful because the LED wires are run underneath the ESCs. You can see me pointed out here. Just be careful not to snip that if you want to keep your LEDs working. I want to show you here that despite my best efforts to be super careful, as careful as I can, while removing the heat shrink from this ESC, and not just this ESC, but others as well, I pulled one of the motor wires off, just clean off the ESC. It didn't pull the pad off, the wire just broke off of the solder because the wire is so flimsy. And I resoldered, I stripped and I resoldered it, and it was no big deal, but yeesh. If you do this, be super careful, and even if you're super careful like I was, you probably will still pull one or two. Definitely pay attention to the order that they're in so you don't solder them back on in the wrong order and make your motor spin the wrong way. Definitely double check that when you, uh, when you go back and before you fly again. The C2 pads on the ESC are right on the underside here. There's these four little circular pads right here, and if you're trying to flash a Scilabs ESC over the C2 interface and you see those four pads that look like that, it doesn't look like that on every ESC. Sometimes they split them up in different places. Why? I don't know, just to be confusing. But if you're working with a Scilabs ESC and you see those four pads just like that in a row, that's almost certainly the C2 interface. The four pads of the C2 interface consist of the ground pad, which I've marked here in black, the C2D pad, which I've marked here in white, and the C2CK pad, which I've marked here in red. Those pads, when they're on the board in a row of four like this here, they're always going to be in that order. So on the one side will be the ground pad, on the other side will be the C2D pad, and then the next one in from the C2D pad will be the C2CK pad. You do need to be able to identify which of these pads is which, and the easiest way to do that is to use your multimeter and check for continuity to ground on the two outermost pads. The one of those that has continuity to ground is the ground pad, and then the one on the other side is the C2D pad. On the lower left and lower right, you'll see the pinout tables that show you where to attach these wires to either an Arduino Nano or the other one Arduino General on the lower right, is what you'd use for an Arduino Uno, which is what I'm using to flash. Most people are going to be using an Arduino Nano. That's far more common. If you're only flashing one ESC at a time, you're going to connect to what's shown in the very first three lines, ground, C2D, and C2K. However, BL Heli can flash multiple ESCs at once if you flash the four-wire interface in what's called multi-mode, and it, I recommend that you do that. When you create the four-wire interface, definitely use the multi-firmware. There's really no downside I know of to do that, and you can flash multiple ESCs at a time instead of just doing them one at a time. Of course, you can also do them one at a time, see? So there's no downside. If you watch my video on how to create a four-wire interface or a 4WIF, that's what I tell you to do. Now, if you intend to flash multiple ESCs at once, what you're going to do is You'll take all of the ground pads, connect them all together, and connect them to ground on the Arduino. You'll take all of the C2D pads, connect them together, and connect them to, in the case of an Arduino Nano, we would connect them to D2, pin di digital pin 2. And you would take each individual C2CK pad and connect them to, on the, again, on the Nano, pins D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, etc. And you could flash up to eight ESCs at a time. If you're familiar with how multi-ESC flashing works with a four-wire interface, that probably made sense to you and you're nodding your head. And if you're not familiar with that and that confused you, set it aside. Just do one ESC at a time. Connect ground to ground, C2D to D pin D2, and C2CK to pin D3 for a nano. Or for the Uno, it would be ground D12 and D11. Very simple. 
Now, there's two common ways of connecting your Arduino to these pads. One way to do it is to solder wires to these pads and then just plug those wires into your Arduino and away you go. Here's the problem with that. Number one, it takes more time. If you're wanting to bang these out quickly, then that's going to take time. Number two, these pads are not very big and it's a little scary on a tight ESC getting your soldering iron in there. You're going to desolder something and damage your ESC. It's kind of scary and kind of difficult. Not everybody's going to be able to do it. And even in my case where I was able to do it, I kind of didn't want to. So the other approach is that you can just build sort of a jig where you take four wires, you clamp them together. Uh, you can use a clothespin and some hot glue or a hemostat. I'm going to show you a picture of how I did it in a minute. But basically, you just hold four wires in a row and you press them up against the pads with your hand and you just carefully hold them in place while you flash the ESC. Now that has its own problems. Number one, it can be hard to make good contact with the pads. It can seem like you're making good contact, but yet the ESC won't flash, okay? So it's pretty fiddly. I have trouble doing it consistently. And the other thing is you have to hold the pad, you have to hold the wires perfectly steady while you're flashing. And, and so if you don't have a second set of hands to plug in the battery for the ESC, for example, you know, to power it up so you can flash it, and then with your other hand, you got to work the mouse so in BL Heli Suite you're commanding it to flash. Doing all that while holding the wires against the pads is, is pretty fiddly and pretty difficult. So solder versus holding them, neither of them is great, and, uh, and you just got to, you know, pick your poison. There is a way to make it a little bit easier, though, and it has to do with that fourth pad in the middle between the red and the black one, which I haven't marked. What is that pad? That pad is a 3.3 volt input for the microprocessor. And if you can supply 3.3 volts to that pad, you don't need to plug in your quadcopter battery to power up the ESC. The minute you touch power to that pad, the ESC will power up and you can go ahead and flash it. And the additional advantage of that is that there is zero chance that the motor will ever spin. You can't spin the motor off of the 3.3 volt input, so you don't need to go to the hassle of taking your props off if you power the ESC that way. In my case, the Arduino Uno that I used when I flashed does have a 3.3 volt output and I did use it. So you're going to see that I'm using four wires and that's and I'm not plugging my battery in when I go to flash the ESC. And the reason is that I'm powering the ESC through that 3.3 volt pad. If you don't want to do that or if you don't have a source of 3.3 volts, then you can just uh, use, your, use your battery, plug your battery in. Whatever you do, do not accidentally apply 5 volts to that pad. You will fry the ESC. That, that's it. You'll, you're done. Okay. So here's an example where I soldered the wires to the ESC. It's a little hard to see the exact pads it's on, but take my word for it. It's on the right pads. Black is ground on the inside or the left. White is C2CK on the outside or the right. And the blue wire is the C2D, which should have been red to be consistent with BL Heli's coloring, but I didn't have a red wire handy. If we continue to scroll to the right here, you can see where I have plugged those wires into my Arduino, but that's actually not going to be very helpful to most of you because, number one, most of you are probably using an Arduino Nano, and I'm using an Arduino Uno. And then also I've got this breadboard shield on top, which is, means that my digital pins are not really where yours are. It's not going to look the same for you anyway, even if you are using an Uno. You've just got to go look at that table I showed you in the previous section of the video, or you actually have that document. It's in your BL Heli Suite folder in the manuals subfolder, and the name of the document is BL Heli Suite 4W IF Interfaces Pinout.pdf. And this is what it looks like when I used a uh, hemostat. And if you don't have hemostats around, they are super useful. You want a little stubby one like this one, and you want a long curved one. Super useful. Get a hemostat, they're great. Anyway, I used a hemostat to clamp these wires in place and manually hold them against the pads. And it's the same as before, except in this case, I've also added the 3.3 volt, that's the red wire, uh, that which is powering the ESC for flashing. I got to tell you, I know some people talk about doing it this way like it's the easiest thing in the world. I found it really hard to get the ESC to flash this way. Number one, you got to line these wires up just right because those pads aren't real big. And then you got to hold them against the wires and you got to not accidentally scrape anything else with that 3.3 volt wire. And sure, I don't know, 3.3 volts, is that going to blow anything? I don't know. You got to keep them in place while you're working the mouse with the other hand. 
it's a real hassle. If I had a second person to work the mouse, maybe it would have been easier. Even then, getting the tips of the wires to be just the same length so they all hit the pads at the same time and etc. I did two of them this way. It took me forever. It was a real pain in the butt. I did the other two soldering and that was a real pain in the butt too. I guess what I'm saying is flashing over C2 is a pain in the butt. And if it's easy for you, good for you and shut up. All right, so your wires are going where they need to go and you're ready to flash the ESC. You're gonna connect to the programmer in BL Heli Suite, that's the Arduino, just like usual. And you're gonna hit read setup and you'll see this message. The memory of the ESC seems to be locked, typically required for new ESCs. Do you wanna flash firmware? You're gonna say, okay. Then it's gonna say target unknown because BL Heli isn't on there. And you're gonna pick the correct firmware for the ESC you're, that you're flashing. In this case, it's the Flycolor Fairy 30 amp firmware. I know this is not a 30 amp ESC, but that's the right ESC, I assure you. You're gonna pick the multi version because this is a multi rotor and you're gonna say, okay. And you're gonna flash and this will feel very familiar to you. Look, it's just like flashing any other way. In fact, this is very similar to that once you take out the hassle of actually physically getting to the ESC pads. After the flash ends, there you go, you're done. The ESC now has BL Heli on it and now you can flash it the normal way via Betaflight pass through you know, over the signal wire just like usual. So go ahead, wrap it back up again in shrink wrap or electrical tape, you're good to go now. Oh, dang it, there's something I almost forgot to tell you and it's pretty darn important. Before you do this, you must select the correct interface in BL Heli Suite. You need to be using the interface B, which is the Scilabs C2 interface via the four-way interface, four-way IF, that's what you flashed to your Arduino. Okay, if you don't have that selected, this will not work. Kind of important. <laughs> it almost finished the video and didn't tell you. Alrighty, so now you know how to do it. it. Just get the wires from point A to point B like I showed you and then flash the ESC using BL Heli Suite like usual. Yeah, it's just that simple, isn't it? That's why it's taken me 12 minutes to get here. <laughs> no, it's, the hard part is getting to the C2 interface and then just flashing it is with BL Heli Suite like usual. I'm going to leave you now with a montage of me trying to flash this freaking ESC while holding the wires on manually and each time for some reason it doesn't work and then the wires aren't lined up and I have to straighten them and yada 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 I think you'll find my misery hilarious. Um, the, the real irony of this situation is that after I finished upgrading them I went to hover it and the darn thing wouldn't take off and that's a topic I'm going to cover in another video but I thought, well, if the ESC seemed to work right in the motors tab, it would not take off. It, it just sort of acted like motor number four was not getting power. Long story short, I said, dang it, stupid ESCs didn't, and I took them off the copter and I put new ESCs and new motors on there. So this guy got a big upgrade and it still didn't work. It was the freaking flight controller that was screwed up. So anyway, I don't have any flight video for you of how much this change improved the copter because the ESCs are now in the garbage because I was sure they were the reason the copter couldn't take off. And they weren't that great anyway. I have much better BL Heli S ESCs on here now too. So uh, yeah, I call this project putting lipstick on a pig because this copter is kind of a pig and I'm, I'm prettying it up as pretty as it'll get. Anyway, that's gonna be all for now. I hope this was educational. As always, happy flying, but not with the ESG and Racer 210 because it's a pig. Bye-bye.